Hello and welcome back to Switch and Lever. Boxes and drawers, what would we do without them? But what if your new drawer unit doesn't quite match the rest of your decor? With some slight ingenuity and hardware, that's not much of a problem. One thing I truly love about IKEA is that much of their selection can be had in raw untreated wood or plywood. It will readily accept both stain and paint, making it ideal for hacking to anything your creativity could come up with. We're starting off with an IKEA Muppe mini chest of drawers. Unfortunately, it's something which may be on its way out of the IKEA selection. It's not sold in Sweden anymore, even though it's available in some other locations. I was lucky enough to pick up a slightly used one at the flea market, but it does mean that I had to go through some extra steps to get rid of the marks left by the previous owner, which of course you wouldn't need to do if you were to buy a new one. The drawers also have a notch cut out in the front for easy opening, but the beauty here is that if you don't like the notch, you can simply flip the drawer around to get a completely smooth face. This also proves fortunate if you, like me, have a slightly used model as the backs tend to be in a bit better condition. Since we're going to prep the unit for staining, I would recommend to give it a light sanding with a 220 grit sandpaper to make sure everything is nice and smooth. Don't be too vigorous in your sanding however, as the top veneer isn't super thick and you could easily go through it. There are a lot of surfaces to sand, but don't fret if your arms start hurting. Pain builds character. Plywood dust, however, slowly kills your lungs, so do wear a dust mask. I wanted to make the insides of my drawers a bit more durable to hold up to wear a bit better than the rest, so I took some time to mask off the outsides of the drawers and spray the insides with a couple of layers of black spray paint. This also took care of the marks left by the crayons that were kept in the unit before it came into my possession. Be sure to remove the masking tape while the paint is still wet, as you may damage the paint if you wait until it's dried. Remember that everything you do once, you're going to have to do five more times, so it may be quicker to batch it all out instead of doing one at a time. First mask all the drawers, then move on to paint them, rather than going back and forth with each one. Now once the paint is thoroughly dry, let's give that boring plywood some depth and life. I'm using a mix of mahogany and dark onyx oil-based stain made by Zar. I found the pure mahogany stain was too red for my taste, so cutting it with a dark stain brought it to a more appealing hue. Don't worry about getting stain on the black spray paint. As it's dark, it will become imperceptible in the final product. As opposed to using a brush, I definitely recommend using regular cotton rags, at least for smaller objects like these. It's also easier to control when you're wiping off the excess stain. While the video plays, let's talk briefly about stains. There are many different kinds of stain. Water-based, alcohol, gel-based, and like this oil-based stain. The benefit of oil-based stains, as opposed to water-based, is that it won't raise the grain of the wood, and you have a much longer working time. As the oil-based stain doesn't penetrate the wood as much, you may need to add another layer once the first one is dry to get the wood dark enough. The benefit of the stain not raising the grain is that any varnish you apply after will still feel smooth, and the need for sanding in between layers of varnish becomes superfluous. The extra working time also allows you to slather on a thicker coat of stain, and then wait for a few minutes while it soaks in, then to come back and wipe off the excess. Doing that with a water-based stain will likely result in an uneven and splotchy job. I'm definitely a fan of oil-based stains, but remember, as it's based on linseed oil, the rags need to be disposed of properly, as there is a minute risk of spontaneous combustion. This particular stain dries in a few hours, but there is definitely no harm in letting it cure overnight. Once the stain is dry, wipe over it again with a clean rag to make sure there are no drips or anything you might have missed. Thick areas of stain may take days to cure, if at all, so wiping them away is paramount before adding a sealer. At this point the stain itself looks great, but it won't add much in terms of shine or luster. I chose to simply spray varnish all the pieces with a couple of coats of varnish. 
You can definitely add a brush or wipe on polyurethane varnish or even water-based varnish if you so desire. It's a good idea though to make a few test pieces as you're staining and try out your varnish before putting it on your actual workpiece. Some varnishes won't work well with some stains and may lift them or make the result look splotchy. I didn't bother to stain and varnish all the way into the main unit or the back and the bottom of it, as it's areas which will never see the light of day during normal usage. So, to be able to open the drawers as we're turning the notches inwards, we need some sort of hardware. I got these pre-patinated brass drawer pulls with space for small labels cheaply from eBay, but you could probably find similar things in a local hardware store as well. To make sure we're placing the drawer pulls on the same place on each drawer, we're going to make a quick paper template. Mark and cut out a piece of paper the size of the front of your drawer, place your drawer pull where you would want it on the template and mark the two screw holes. Also remember to mark the center of the holes. Now you can take your template, put it on the front of your drawer and mark the location of the screw holes using a nail and a hammer. Mark a small drill bit with some tape to make sure you're not going to drill through the front of the box and pre-drill the locations you marked. This will help the screws grab into the wood and prevent the wood from splitting as well. Since the screws have a bit of a countersink, we also give the wood a little countersink as well to make sure that the screws seat all the way down into the wood. If you're a stickler for detail, you can also make sure all the screw heads are oriented in the same way. Every bit counts in the final impression. Oh, and now do that five times more before finally reassembling your drawer unit. Adding handwritten labels will keep with the style of the unit. When done, just fill your drawers with anything you could imagine and enjoy a work well done. As long as you don't pull the drawers entirely all the way out, the somewhat rough interior is entirely hidden and should hopefully look great in your home or workshop for many years to come. This particular model has become rather popular to hack, so I could definitely recommend going to somewhere like Pinterest and search for inspiration if you want to see what others have done. We've barely just scratched the surface of the very thriving IKEA hacking community. Why don't you dip your toe in and see what you could come up with? I truly hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have some spare time in between coats of varnish, check out one of the previous videos from Switch and Lever. If you haven't already, do subscribe and follow on Instagram for exclusive sneak peeks of future things to come. Until next time!